Hi, everyone. Welcome. I'm Pastor Paul. Time for Pastor Paul's Bible Talk. Glad you're with me. We release this on a Saturday morning, so I'll say good morning to all of you in case you're watching it as it's being released, or good day, or good evening, wherever you are. And this is our time to talk a little bit about the Bible together and talk about current events from a biblical perspective. And our topic this week is, hey, men, stop telling women how to act. And our main text is going to be from Luke chapter 7. And welcome to the show. I am Pastor Paul from the pastor-paul.com website and the community that goes along with it. I'm glad you're here. And we talk about things going on in current events from a biblical perspective and particularly from a, a perspective of people who are deconstructing or, as I like to say, rethinking faith and giving ourselves permission to think differently about what we've been told. And one of the things that we were always told when I was growing up is keep yourself pure. This idea of purity culture, what does it look like to be right with God in the area of sex and sexuality? And it's an area that I believe the church has missed it more than any other area and done more damage to real human beings than any others. And this really came about this week as a topic with a tweet that went out by a, a pastor that I would say is an idiot, but that would be mean of me to say that. But his name is Brian Salve or something like that. I have no idea who he is. And he sent out a tweet that said, Dear Lady. So right off the bat, any tweet from a male pastor or a male minister that says, Dear Ladies, we've got a problem. And he says, There's no reason whatsoever for you to post pictures of yourself in low-cut shirts, underwear, blah, 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 not to show your weight loss journey, not to show that you've had your baby, blah, blah, blah. And then he signed it, your brothers. And Beth Moore had the great clap back on him of like, hey, I don't ever want you to use the word bra in a sentence ever again. Um, and so then, of course, Brian Salve did what evangelicals always do and proclaimed himself oppressed and, uh, you know, threatened and, you know, did did like 20 more tweets because he really enjoyed his 15 minutes of fame. I don't like giving that guy this publicity, but I had to answer on this one because I think the, the hatred of women, and now I know every evangelical out there is going to say, we don't hate women. We think of them as more valuable as fine China. I've heard all that BS before you're making them secondary citizens. You're making them objects. Even when you say the fine China analogy, we don't, she's more valuable. Men are the everyday plates that just get used. She's China. You know, again, it's, it's objectifying women. And at the end of the day, it puts women in secondary positions. And so I made a TikTok about it. And I want to show that to you as a part of our discussion today. And so let me find that and play that for you now, as uh, this was my immediate reaction to this tweet. Hey, everyone, just know when Christians say something stupid like this on social media, it's not in alignment with the heart of God, nor the story of Jesus. We see this in the New Testament story of Jesus at the religious leader's house with the lascivious woman kissing his feet. She even took down her hair, which was a bedroom act of intimacy between a man and a woman in that culture. The first century equivalent of a woman showing herself semi-naked on Instagram. And of course, the religious guys were very offended by the actions of the woman. But Jesus called out the hearts of the men. And he told them she would be known throughout history while they would be despised. The moral of the story for today is God cares way less about the clothing that you wear or how you appear on social media than what's inside of your heart. Something for you to consider, you Christian men. Hey, everyone. So that's my response via TikTok when that happened. And I want to talk about that text today because I'm pretty tired of Christian. And guys, I use quotes on Christian because American Christianity has become very little like Christ 
And so I like to use the quotes around Christian because Christian actually means somebody trying to live and look like the teachings of Jesus Christ. And Christians in America look very little like those teachings these days. And so we all heard this as kids, right? This song that came out recently, Modest is Hottest, like women don't tempt men with your attire. You need to dress modestly. And I want to tell you this not only is damaging to young women, uh, dehumanizing to young men, but it's not biblical in my opinion. We can make an argument over it if you like, but I believe it's not the spirit of Christ. So therefore it's not a Christian Christian teaching. And let me discuss why. So let's start with the story I was talking about there in the TikTok, Luke 7, 36 through 50, and the story of the woman at the feet of Jesus. I called her the lascivious woman. I don't like that term. I don't like using that, but I, I, sometimes I keep things in the biblical language of the evangelicals, so maybe they'll be able to track along with us. And so let, let's just read the story, and then we'll talk about it a little bit. Um, it's, uh, these headings again were added later in history. They weren't in the original text, but this one's called a woman washes Jesus feet. Verse 36, one of the Pharisees or one of the religious leaders asked Jesus to eat with him. So Jesus went into the Pharisee's house and sat at the table and sorry, my camera's in the way, a sinful woman in the town by the way, it wasn't Mary Magdalene. I know we say Mary Magdalene in this story, but there's no evidence that this was Mary Magdalene whatsoever. Uh, this is, we just know she was described as a sinful woman. So it says a sinful woman in the town learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house. So she brought an alabaster jar of perfume and stood behind Jesus at his feet crying. She began to wash his feet with her tears and she dried them with her hair kissing them many times and rubbing them with the perfume. When the Pharisees who asked Jesus to come to his house saw this, he thought to himself, if Jesus were a prophet, he would know that the woman touching him is a sinner. Jesus said to the Pharisee, Simon, I have something to say to you. Simon said, teacher, tell me. He says, rabbi, he gives him a title of honor. Rabbi, tell me. And Jesus said, two people owed money to the same, to the same banker. One owed 500 coins and the other owed 50. They had no money to pay what they owed, but the banker told both of them they did not have to pay him. Which person would love the banker more? Simon the Pharisee answered, I think it would be the one who owed him the most money. And Jesus said to Simon, you are right. Then Jesus turned toward the woman and said to Simon, do you see this woman? When I came into your house, you gave me no water for my feet, but she washed my feet with her tears and dried them with her hair. You gave me no kiss of greeting, but she has been kissing my feet since I came in. You did not put oil on my head, but she, per she poured perfume on my feet. I tell you that her many sins are forgiven, so she showed great love. But the person who is forgiven only a little will only love a little. Then Jesus said to her, your sins are forgiven. The people sitting at the table begin to say among themselves, who is this who even forgives sin? And Jesus said to the woman, because you believed you are saved from your sins, go in peace. So that's the story. And here's how I want to tie it into the topic of how evangelicals view women. And we could go a lot of different directions, but I want to go in this idea of sex and sexuality and how we've taught young girls through the years, um, you need to protect men from yourself and from your body. And we've told young men, you are animals driven by your eyes, and therefore you need to take precautions and make sure you marry the right woman and make sure you marry the woman that's going to satisfy your sexual desires. All of these things are aberrant, bad teaching to human beings. And I think don't line up with the Bible. We see several times in the Bible, including this story, which is told in all of the Gospels, uh, that men judge women for their actions. In the story of the woman caught in adultery, a bunch of men bring a, a woman and they say, we caught her having sex. We don't have the man here. We just have her here. We caught her having sex. The law says she should be stoned, even though nobody was ever stoned for adultery in that culture. They brought her to Jesus and said, what do you say? Should she be stoned? Yes or no. And Jesus turned 
to them, to the men. And he said, listen, she's not the problem. You're the problem. And I would say to Brian Salve, the pastor that posted that idiotic tweet, if you're telling women that they're drawing you to look at them naked on Instagram or any other social media, that's a you problem. That's not her problem. Now, yes, could there be a time where women are doing that out of unhealthiness or an unhealthy need for attention? Yes, I'm not saying it. there's not a time when it's not wrong, but it is not inherently wrong for a, a, a person, much less a woman, anybody to want to look nice, look sexy, dress in a way that attracts attention or, or even just makes them feel good about themselves. Hi, everyone. Can I interrupt this Bible talk just for a moment to give you an invitation to join in in being part of supporting the work that I do as Pastor Paul and this Pastor Paul community of pursuing emotional and spiritual well-being together? Um, a lot of ways you can support. You can, you know, support my material online, likes, comments, shares, all those things on TikTok or YouTube, uh, subscribe on YouTube, all of those things. But I want to give you one special invitation of how you can be a part of this. And that is by joining the Pastor Paul support community. Uh, you can just point your camera right at the QR code on the screen, and it'll take you to the website, pastor-paul.com. And while you're there, click on the support button. And, and in that support, button. It'll take you to some options for you to give financially into this work that I do. For as little as $5.99 a month, you could make a big difference. If we could get 200, 300 people to sign up at $5.99 a month, it would make a big difference in helping me to live as I do this work. Or there are other ways that you can be a part of supporting this work, and that's through subscribing to our events and joining us. And we have a great one coming up. It's called Am I Still a Christian? This is a free webinar we have coming up that's going to introduce our de deconstruction you discussion groups. Um, am I still a Christian is a question I get asked more than any others by deconstructionists. And I want to tell you in this free webinar, not only is it okay for you to deconstruct, but I believe it's commanded by the Bible. And I can help set at ease the fears many have of like, what if God really is mad at me for thinking about different things, for questioning what I've been taught, for not going to church is God mad at me? And I'm going to tell you, no, God is not mad at you. And we will look at it through the lens of the question, am I still a Christian? Am I still a follower of Jesus? How do I define that in this crazy time in my life? Am I still a Christian? It'll feed into our deconstruction you discussion groups. There is a fee for those. And again, doing this work and people signing up for these webinars and discussion groups and my coaching, that is how I survive and am able to do the things I do to put together this Pastor Paul community. So would you consider going to pastor-paul.com, signing up for the webinar, signing up as a monthly supporter and being a part of our community chat board? I'm going to do cool stuff stuff over there with answering questions from people and having content that's available just for the supporters on my site. And so I want to invite you to go and join the Pastor Paul support community at pastor-paul.com. Will you do me a favor? If you appreciate what I do, at least go and check the website out, see what the resources are there, and let's start figuring out how we do this together. I have to make a living doing this. I hate asking for money. I hate asking for people to do anything, but it's a part of what we do to do this together. I don't have tithers. I don't pass the plate, and I'm not beholden to donors because I want to be able to talk about whatever we need to talk about in a moment in the season. So what I need is you 
to be a subscriber on the pastor-paul.com website. And would you at least go check it out? Some of you, I know you can't afford it. You can even sign up for free and just be a part of the activities there. But whatever you can do to create that momentum will help as we try to build this thing so I can maintain the work that I do. It's been tough going. I know financially it's tough times for a lot of people and it's been a struggle for me to get what I need together to subsist. And if I find out this is not a service that is serving the community well, I'll go do something else. But I believe we're building something here together. And so would you go and click on that support Pastor Paul button at pastor Paul. Com. I will forever be grateful for it, and we'll have a lot of fun together. So I'll see you there, pastor-paul.com. Now back to our modesty Bible talk uh, on the Pastor Paul's Bible talk this week from pastor-paul.com. Jesus is saying, don't you know how you think she sinned a lot and you don't sin very much, but still you ought to love the one forgiving your sin as much, uh, you know, at least proportionate to what you owe for that sin as she does. And Jesus is making the comparison. You don't think you're guilty of much and she's guilty of lot, but you didn't do anything and she's giving everything. So let's understand what's happening in this story. And, and it tells us a little bit about how Protestant evangelicalism looks at, at sex versus how the Bible looks at sex. Let me tell you something about this story that you may not have heard before. This is a sinful woman. We're told she's a prostitute in another story. This is a woman offering herself to a man in a very intimate, if not sexual way. This is a moment where a prostitute is offering herself to Jesus, and I believe offering herself to Jesus sexually in the midst of this in, of this meeting, and the men are all offended at her because she's the lascivious woman. And Jesus is saying, I'm way more offended by you than by her. And I believe Brian Salve's tweet, and you're welcome to go tell him I said so, is a moment when Jesus, if he were incarnate on earth today, would look at that pastor and say, what about you? I'm more concerned about you. And by the way, if you have a lot of naked women showing up on your Instagram feed, it's called an algorithm. It shows up because you see them, you spend time looking at them. And if they keep popping up on your feed, Pastor, it may be because you're lingering a bit too long on those pictures. The point is, a woman being attractive or even sexy in her dress does not make her sinful. And let me tell you something else, a man looking and saying, wow, that woman is really beautiful and even sexy is also not a sin. That is two human beings being human. But Jesus said, if you look on a woman, you're, you're committing adultery with her in her heart. Nope. Let's go look at that passage because I think it's one that's very, very important to the discussion. Um, well, let me see if I can find it. Do I have it up here still? Ah, what did I do with that passage now? I may have to edit this part out. Um, I had it up here just a second ago. <laughs> oh, shoot. Oh, here it is. Okay. It is... Matthew 5, 27 through 28. And this is one that people use. Um, you know, that when Jesus said, You've heard it's you've heard it was said, do not commit adultery, but I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman in order to covet her has already committed adultery with her in her heart. Or any man that looks with her uh, in lust has committed adultery in her in, in his heart. Um, and so this verse is often used to say, see, if a woman dressed sex sexily and a man looks at her and says, woo, she's sexy, adultery has occurred. And both she is guilty for dressing that way and he is guilty for having that lust in his heart. And so what Christian men do is 
this Billy Graham rule and Mike Pence, the vice president of the United States, you probably, this really bugs me. You've heard me talk about this a number of times uh, because I have a wife who's very active in the business world, in the government sector, very involved in culture. And, and she would be treated often as a second class citizen because of her gender by good Christian. And I use quotes around both of those words men who often would patronizingly pat her on the head, thinking her less than them, and she would often prove differently. But the Billy Graham rule was that Billy Graham never met with a woman one-on-one -on -one because there would be the opportunity then for him to be attracted to her, to lust after her, to commit adultery in his heart, and maybe even be moved to try to commit adultery with her as far too many Christian leaders have recently done with women under their purview. And, and by the way, men in other spheres of our culture as well. So Mike Pence, the vice president of the United States, refused to meet with a woman one-on-one. -on -one. This is a man working at the highest level of our cultural government, at the highest level of cultural influence, and saying to women, you don't deserve the same access to me as men do because there's a chance that I might lust after you in my heart. By the way, Mike Pence probably missed the fact that men often are attracted to men as well, and there could be that attraction at some point to say, ooh, that man's pretty good looking too, perhaps. So it again, it's just a very misogynistic and even homophobic stance that looks like righteousness. Simon in the story looked righteous because he's saying, Jesus, this lascivious woman is at your feet offering her to your, to, to offering herself to you. To be at a man's feet in that culture was to be saying, I'm here to serve you. Ruth, in the story of Ruth, slept at the feet of Boaz's bed as if to say, I'm here offering myself to you should you be interested. Then the woman, her tears dropping onto Jesus' feet to wash his dirty feet after walking in sandals for many miles, then took her hair down and wiped his feet with her hair. To take your hair down as a woman in that culture was an intimate bedroom act. We can assume from reading the story, this was a woman who the righteous man, the Mike Pence of the day, considered to be lascivious, and she was doing acts of offering herself in intimacy to Jesus. And the men were very, very offended by it because they were righteous. And Jesus was saying, I'm more offended at you and your hearts. And I think part of what Jesus was saying in this story is because of the way women were treated in that culture, that for this woman to offer herself sexually to Jesus and offer the perfume that was likely her dowry for, for a marriage that was never going to happen because she was now considered a sinful woman. She was offering to Jesus everything that she had, all of the things of value in her life, her bodily agency and her dowry of perfume. She was giving it all to Jesus. And Jesus was saying, I'm not going to take her up on the offer but I am honored by the offer because she's offering all of value that she has to offer me in this culture. And you guys, you didn't even take a moment to wash my feet like any good household would do in this culture. And you're offended at her, I'm offended at you. And Brian Salve, so righteous to say, don't dress scantily clad on Instagram. I want to say to you, Jesus would say to you, I'm offended at you more than that girl on Instagram. What is in your heart, Brian? And I'm not meaning to pick just on Brian Salve. I'm talking to all of you evangelicals. What is in our hearts that make us treat women as second-class citizens and girls as threats 
to men. If young girls are threats to men with their dress, that is a problem with the men that needs to be dealt with in the culture of the church. And the number of predators that are taking advantage of our young children are evidence that we're doing this wrong, that we have this view backwards. Tamar in the Bible tricked her father-in-law into having sex with her and impregnating her. And the hero of that story in the Bible is Tamar or Tamar. She's noted in the lineage of Jesus in Matthew 1. We look at a woman, a sexual woman, as being a negative thing in the church unless she's giving sex to her husband every time he wants in the marriage bed, even if she doesn't want to do it which is another sickening thing we teach, by the way. But the Bible doesn't look at women that way. When did we stop following the Bible? A long time ago is my theory. And one of the things I love is when this story is told in Matthew 26, Jesus says this, truly I say to you, wherever the gospel is proclaimed in the whole world, in all of history, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Like I said in the TikTok video, Jesus said, she's going to be remembered through all of history for this act. You, on the other hand, are going to be remembered negatively from this story. We may think we're being pure to incure, encourage purity culture from our kids, but instead we're doing great damage. Being sexually attractive to one another is not a sin. It is human, and we need to stop asking people to be human. And then if they decide they want to have sex together, let's just make sure we're all being honest that we're doing it in a healthy manner rather than in some unhealthy need to fulfill. See, the problem of what Jesus said is not, if you look on a woman and think about having sex with her, that is a sin. It's not a sin. It's human. What is a sin is to covet her. Lust and covet are two very different things. And, and maybe I should even break it down more than that. To look on a woman and say, wow, she is sexually attractive is, is a part of being a human being. It is built into us, into our nature to look at one another and see each other as attractive and even sexually attractive. It's the moment we start to say, and I want to take that for myself, that it becomes a sin. And Almost always when the Bible is talking about sexual sin in Scripture, and I believe this is the passages about homosexuality as well, it is talking about what was very common in that culture, power deferentials, that the, the, the passages about homosexuality were about men taking less uh, powerful, that, that men or, or young boys without agency over their body and taking them for themselves sexually. Jesus is saying, if you covet a woman in your heart. So I, I don't think pornography is inherently sinful. It's when we start to say, I, I'm coveting this in my heart and I'm taking the agency of another human being away, or I'm doing this in violation of relationship with somebody, that's when it becomes sin. It's not sin to look on your neighbor's wife and say, she's attractive. It's when we start to covet her and take her for ourselves and even, even into perhaps a, a fantasy sort of way that then takes away agency of the body of the human being and takes that control into ourselves, that's when it becomes uh, an effort that is now violating relationship with one another and therefore sin. Do you get the difference? Looking at a, a beautiful woman and saying, wow, she's beautiful and sexy. Looking at a handsome man and saying, wow, what a handsome and sexy man. Those are not sinful. Those are human responses. Let's quit trying to make ourselves not be human because of this. When we stop our humanity in some belief that we're doing something of purity, 
All we're doing is squashing down something that exists. We're not getting rid of it. We're squashing it down and it will, like a balloon, pop out somewhere else. It will, it will show itself in some other degree. Yeah, this pastor may think, look at me being pure and getting beaten up for, for being pure hearted. When in fact, what the whole of the world is saying is you're, you're full of it. You're full of it when you say, I have totally tamed the, the sexuality of my body. What you're doing is you're telling people to act against their humanity. And what it creates is what we see so often is really messed up sexuality inside of marriage, just as much as outside of marriage. I think it's a big part of why we end up with half of our Christian marriages divorced, just like in the statistics of the rest of the world, because we're screwing up people by saying, don't be human, act less than human. And there's no reason to do it because the Bible's not prohibiting us looking on one another and saying, wow, you're beautiful. If you don't agree with me, go ring, read the Song of Solomon. And it's, it's almost an R-rated, if not X-rated book about God's relationship with humanity. It's extremely intimate and extremely sexual. Read the stories of the Bible, extremely intimate and extremely sexual because sex is a gift from God. It is one of the major drivers of our life, needing to eat, needing to be safe and, and wanting to, to do the act of procreation. And it happens to be really fun. So why despise it and tell our children to despise it? Why don't we instead teach them healthy relationship tools, healthy sexual interaction tools, and maybe we end up with a few less pregnancies. Maybe we end up with a few less screwed up children. And maybe we end up with a whole bunch of young women with a lot less self-hatred of their bodily identity. You can say anything you want about the world's use of sexuality. Yes, I think we over-sexualize young women in media, but at very least the world out there is telling young women, don't be ashamed of your body. Love it just as you are. Love yourself just as you are. And the church is saying, hate your body because it's evil and it makes you a temptress to men and you should not want to be that. When in fact, being a temptress to people around them is exactly what their body was created to do so that people would be attracted to one another and procreate and continue to perpetuate the species. We're asking people to not be human and it's damaging them, church. Be realistic about who people are are, and maybe we'll stop leading them to self-hatred and self-harm, for which I think the church is so guilty of the suicide rate in our country, because we say stupid stuff like this guy's tweet. Young women, you are beautiful. Never forget it. Never be ashamed of it. Love yourself. And yes, don't put yourself in a situation where you're in danger, but also don't think that you're some kind of second-class citizen because you have to protect men from you. That is bad teaching from a bad male-dominated the theological structure. Guys, you're beautiful too. The thing that drives you inside is created in you. You are to want to have sex. By the way, the girls, you get to want to have sex too. And you get to want to have sex that is pleasurable to you. So don't be afraid of sex. That's bad teaching from people thinking they're doing something godly. What we need to check ourselves on is, are we using sex as a tool to unhealthfully fill a, 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 a something missing inside of us? And are we then violating relationship because we're not doing it out of honesty of what our needs are? We're doing it in a way that we set up uh, a really awkward relational situation where we've now had sex and we're and now we're trying to redefine what that relationship looks like. Everything that sin is 
in the Bible is about violation of relationship with one another. It's not about rules. Don't have sex until you're married, then have a lot of sex. That's bad theology. It's know yourself and love that other person as yourself. And if I'm using that other person for myself with no regard to who they are and what their needs are at the moment, I am now coveting them in my heart and perhaps with my body. And that is a violation of relationship. And that is sin. But if I love my neighbor as myself and I know what my needs are and how do I walk them out and I'm taking time to understand the needs of my partner and where they are and what they need, then I don't believe we're violating any covenant of God by having intimacy with one another. This woman offered herself as an intimate being to Jesus and he said, look at that. All of history is going to remember what this woman did and we do today. And because of bad theology, we curse it because we don't understand it. But I'm telling you today, as a beautiful human being, even a sexy one, I bless you to be who you are in the name of Jesus. Guys, if you enjoy what I do on these Bible Talks and it's helpful to you, would you do me a favor and be a part of supporting the Pastor Paul community? Go to pastor-paul.com. Click on the support button, and for as little as $5.99 a month, you can help be a part of keeping this work going. And I would appreciate it so much. And while you're there, sign up for the community chat board where you'll get updates, you'll get special content, a whole bunch of cool, cool stuff. Pastor-Paul.com. Please help. We need to fund this work so I can keep it going. And so would you please go if you're uh, watching on YouTube, you can just point your uh, camera at the screen and the QR code will take you there. Otherwise, go to pastor-paul.com and I would really appreciate you doing so. And one other thing I want to note is we have a webinar coming up. We're asking the question, am I still a Christian? Many of you ask me this question and want to have this discussion. So our webinar is coming up February 24th. And February 26th, two versions of the same event. So you don't have to go to both, just one or the other. And we'll talk about what does it look like to be deconstructing our faith in this season? And am I still a Christian? A Pastor Paul webinar. And uh, we're talking about that. And that will lead to our de de uh, Deconstruction You discussion groups, which I'd love to have you join as well. I'd love to hear your comments and thoughts on what I shared today about sexuality and the Bible's view of sexuality and this tweet from this pastor. And uh, so go to pastor-paul.com, click on the support page to get to the community. If you're already a, a supporter, click on the community page. And I want to hear from you about it uh, at pastor-paul.com. So I speak blessing over you. I tell you, you are amazing. You are a creature that is changing the world with learning to be you and walk as who you are. And I bless that. And I bless all of us as we pursue emotional and spiritual well-being together. Thank you guys for being with me. That's this week's Pastor Paul's Bible Talk. <laughs>